Okay, today's uh, we're going to try to answer some questions. This one's from Commodore256, who is someone who's hung out in my IRC channel before and I've talked to before. And he's asked me, do you know anything about real-time Blender video texture uh, overlay output? There are people that do live Linux shows and live chroma keying um, uh, and Skype in guests as a 3D layer in their live feed, but they are on Hackintosh and uh, run Wirecast to do it. Uh, so basically, do I know of anything either with Blender or other software in Linux that allows you to do live uh, streaming a video with chroma keying? And the answer is no, uh, at least not open source. Uh, I mean, I in the past I have seen, I'm, I'm sure there are some proprietary, really expensive uh, video editing software for Linux. And that's something I realized when I first came to Linux is um, at the time there was very little open source video editing and there were some commercial uh, video editing software that would run on Linux, but I mean like big time commercial where it was a couple thousand dollars. And I'm sure there's something like that out there for Linux, but as far as free and open source, unfortunately not. And this is one of those cases, once again, if that's something you need, then that might be a case where it would be all right to use proprietary software. As I said in a previous video, my personal opinion is the only time it's okay to use proprietary software is kind of when you're forced to. You need to accomplish a task and there is no open source uh, software that does that. Um, so at least, not that I know of, I don't know of any, and uh, I feel like I've been asked this before because I think I looked into it a little bit. Um, hopefully that's something we'll get in the near future. I, I would I would suspect that uh, uh, MLT, Melt, uh, the back end for uh, Caden Live, I, I could definitely see them uh, doing something that like that in the near future. Uh, I, I, after reading this question, I did a quick Google search and it looks like there might be plugins for VLC that does this. I didn't look into it too much. I don't know if those are proprietary plugins, if they're Linux compatible. Um, I've thought in my head, how would I try to accomplish this? Um, the only thing I could think of was like, I could probably pipe stream video into like Python through Pygame, cut out the background and then pipe that into a file and then stream it with VLC. Uh, and going through in my head, it would be kind of a complex setup and it probably would look horrible because it probably wouldn't have feathering and stuff. Um, so the quality probably wouldn't be bad, wouldn't be good. And um, I wouldn't know how to stream the audio through Pygame. Um, but uh, hey, if there's a viewer out there that thinks they can do this, that'd be a great little project to see uh, and have someone create. And I'm not saying there isn't one out there, I just haven't seen one. And uh, But I would suspect that in the near future we probably would have something like that. Just like a year, year and a half ago, we didn't have any video tracking, and now Blender's got all this video tracking, or any really decent video tracking, and now Blender has all these video tracking and 3D tracking tools and camera tracking tools. So definitely, I think we will have something like that soon. If you need something like that now, may have to go with proprietary software, unfortunately. Next question. How do you SSH between two private networks, like between home and work? Um, and someone did answer that question in the comments, so hopefully that person's got the answer. Um, and this is something I haven't done a tutorial on before because different routers will label things differently. But basically, um, here we go, let's, let's get some visuals here. Let's say this is your computer. Actually, let's make that the router because it looks kind of like a router. Let's say this is your router and this is your computer inside your house. Um, you can't get to the computer inside your house from outside because your router is a firewall. So the only thing the router is supposed to let through is stuff that's requested from inside. Um, so what you would have to do is go into your router settings uh, through the web interface. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, then this is going to be really complicated for you. So I'm, I'll just give you a quick overview of this, but basically you go into the router settings and then look for a tab that says um, either virtual servers or port forwarding. Um, and basically you tell it to, anytime someone tries to connect with to port 22 on the router from the outside, redirect that to port 22 on the computer on the inside. You can also use some security through obscurity and use a different port that isn't commonly used on both of them. Um, it's not really security, but if you leave port 22 open on your router and you check the error logs on the machine it's going to, you're going to see a whole bunch of hits every day from some place over in Asia um, trying to break into your system. Most cases, if you disable root 
on it and you use secure uh, password and usernames, the chances of them getting are slim, but you're gonna be hit a lot from these servers in other countries or even your, your current country. So definitely I would use a different port. But basically you open up the port on the router and you let it go through. Now you also need to, one, set a static IP for your machine behind the router because if the IP changes, the router doesn't know who to send it to. So set a static IP on that, forward it through. Now you also need to know the external IP of your, your house, of your modem. Uh, obviously if you go to something like whatismyip.com or whatismyip.org it will tell you your external IP. Now this may change regularly depending on your system. Now with cable, um, if I don't unplug my route or my modem or have a power surge, which my modem is on a battery backup, so hopefully that doesn't happen, um, you could go months without the IP address changing. But it could cause, you know, if you have that power surge, you to be assigned a new IP address and then you won't be able to connect to your system. There's ways around this. There's services out there that will give you kind of like a domain that you can forward to your house and then you install a program that constantly runs and updates that server with your current IP address. I personally haven't used one of those. I have my personal own personal reasons for not that, just probably mostly paranoia. Um, the way I actually do it is uh, I do SSH into my Pogo plug regularly, um, and uh, I have a cron job that runs a little batch script I wrote that grabs my external IP address from a website, and then it takes that and actually sends it to a Google form inside my Google Docs, so I have it do that every so often, so anytime my IP address, if I go to connect and I can't, I can go to that spreadsheet in my Google Docs, and it ha I just look at the last one logged, and I know my new uh, IP address. Um, so that's how I do it, but you're going to need to do something, either pay for a static IP address with your, um, with your cable provider or internet service provider, or use one of these tools that assigns it. So that's, that's an idea of how it works. Obviously, if you've never done this before, you're going to have to look it up. Uh, big thing is just Google port forwarding, and you should be able to find uh, instructions on that. So uh, I hope that helps uh, answer the questions. I hope that you have a great day. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. And uh, go ahead and ask questions in the comments below. Have a great day.